Hello. Hello. Welcome to, to Guitar Geek Arama. <laughs> episode, episode 10. Is it episode 10 already? Yeah. Wow. Now I'm sitting in your seat. I don't know if I'm used to saying the things that you usually say. Yeah, I think so. You're just going to have to be me and I'll have to be you. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that works. I need to grow a beard. Right. What are we doing today? Right. Today we're going to look at um, some pedal tests. We talked about it last week and we're going to test... Uh, whether the battery has a significant effect on how the pedal sounds. And we've got various types of batteries, which we'll talk okay. through in a minute. Now, where has this come from, and what have you heard? Okay. Various sources, mm -hmm. um, like forums about pedals, Eric Johnson. Mm -hmm. You know, and Eric Johnson knows his stuff. I mean, he his does. tone is always spot on, so, you know, I think we can kind of take his word for it a mm -hmm. little bit, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um Maybe my ears just aren't sensitive enough, but I've never noticed a difference. But then I've never back to back them either. Okay, so so this because the story that I've heard is like, um, yeah, like uh, Eric Johnson can tell what brand of battery is in his pedals or something. Yeah. Like that's the legend is that he said to his tech or something, "Hey man, you haven't put Duracells in that." And, yeah, and that sounds like what? Are you mad? But. Okay, well then, going into it, what would you say? Um, my personal take would be, um, I bet you can hear the type of battery if right. you're good, but I don't think you can hear the brand. I don't think you can say it has yeah, to. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, that's probably fair. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know if I'm going to be able to hear the type either. Okay. So we've got three different types. Right. Um, we've got just a, a Duracell Alkali. Mm -hmm. We've got a... Um, Zinc chloride alkali, right. a little bit cheaper. Right. <laughs> I've left the prices on, so you can probably see how much okay. I've been ripped off by oh um, my God. where I bought them from. And then I've got a carbon zinc. Now, this is like the old school type of battery. Uh -huh. um, and this is the one that's supposed to be good for pedals. It's supposed to deliver the power in um, in not um, a kind of a... A regular way when it's asked to deliver voltage uh, it's supposed to have a bit of a sag so it's supposed to sound a bit like a valve amplifier in that way so what we're saying is because the battery doesn't perform very well or very yep. smoothly it, it it adds or emulates the kind of sag feel you get from old valves yeah that's it? right yeah or any any valves yeah i'll believe it when i hear it yeah right me too um so that that's that's where we're at with that um, My guess as well yeah. would be, I bet at really saturated levels, you would probably hear that. Okay. I'm not sure if you're going to hear it with just a little bit of, you know, tube screamer in front of a tube amp, but I could be wrong. I th I definitely think we're more likely to hear it with the fuzz. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we'll do that. Um, right. So we're going to do that. Um, but that's our test for today. Do you want to talk about the pedals as well? Which ones we're using? Or, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so the first one we've got is the uh, classic Ibanez Tube Screamer. Although this one is the turbo, uh, the turbo one. one. It, yeah. yeah, with the different mm -hmm. modes on it. So we can try those out, different mm -hmm. modes. Then we've got um, a classic Fuzz by Dodd, the OD. Yeah, that's that one. Is a, I got that because of Larry, Larry Lalonde from Primus. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that what he uses? Way back in the day. I bet he doesn't now. Yeah, but probably yeah, not. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's nasty. It's kind of a big muff sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we've got um, a Bad Monkey, Yeah. which is a variation on a Tube Screamer type. Yeah, it's a Digitech Tube Screamer these are knockoff. Just, yeah, it? ones we had lying around that actually take batteries. Mm -hmm. And then if we're feeling crazy... <laughs> The uh, the ultra metal, uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll see if we can get a battery in that. We can figure yeah, it out last week. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. All right. Let's get down to business. Yes. So we're we're running a Eldritch um, Tele T type T type. Sorry. Yeah, I'm not allowed to say. Right. Not allowed to say yeah. that word. Yeah. And uh, what's what's in this? There's a bare knuckle in the bridge. It's an aftermath. Okay. So very high output. Um, okay. And. Um, yeah, it's more of a jazzy pickup in the neck. So if we okay. if we want to move to something a bit smoother, we can do that. Well, I say uh, let's just test it with a lot of output from the guitar. So we'll just stick yep. it on the bridge pickup for yep. now, and it's running into into the Laney Cub 15R. So uh -huh. 15 watts all valve um, set, um, fairly saturated. Okay. Um, actually, no. Try play now. Just clean them. And so it's got a bit of bite to some, it, but yeah. yeah, yeah. So it'll give the valve. Um, um, the tube screamers a chance to really boost the 
the front end of the amp. Um, okay, what I'm also going to do right now is close the window because it's very noisy There's outside. A lot of traffic, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we're going to now. So we'll start with a standard Duracell. Oh my god, to open the blister packs could take the whole podcast. Come on, you should have done this in advance. Well, I wanted to show that they were brand new. Right, really. okay. <laughs> so, this is a Duracell 9 volt battery uh, powering the Ibanez Turbo Tube Screamer. And that's pushing in front of the, uh, the Laney Cub. Okay. Um. Running on the bridge pickup, volume up full. There we go. Okay. So we're on. I should have at least opened them all before we commence the test, maybe, though. Well, I think it adds to the um, the charm of uh, the production value of Guitar Geekorama podcast. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, obviously we've got nothing to compare it to now, but that was the the best battery, I suppose, right? What you would think, yeah? The, the most reliable. Most expensive. Right, okay, let's say that. So next, the middle one. Yep. It's running. Can't see the lights from here. It's running. Ah! I've made a very silly error. What's that? <laughs> right, and that's Ooh, it. There we'll be people, people watching the test going, Ah, oh, I'm calling BS on this, man. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, okay. Okay. Here we go. For back real this the, time. Oh, back to the Duracell, yeah. Here we go. Mm -hmm. so that's the most expensive battery the Duracell and now the mid priced battery ok sounds like a uh, amp and uh, pedal <laughs> okay so this is one where we should potentially hear a difference right yeah this is the and we are thing. we yeah. are in no way sponsored by duracell or panasonic or um, green cell right all right here we go okay that has less distortion am i imagining it i don't know is it on? Is the pedal on? No, oh, sorry. I'm right, there we go. Okay, I was going to say, man, that's making a huge tonal difference. No difference to Let, me. Let's do the test again. Mm -hmm. I'll dime it. I'll put it on turbo mode. I'll wind the game right up, and we'll see if that makes a difference. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, really, at this volume, and we're not really cranking it, but at this volume, it was very difficult to hear any real difference. But we're not done yet. I'll see the light from uh, straight up. It's not actually okay. on that one, Ibanez. You need to work on it because you, you can't see it very well on stage either. Mm. Okay, here we go. So. Okay, there's obviously got a lot more, um, it's a lot more saturated, so it's a lot more pronounced. I 
I don't know, you know. Mm, something in there. Something in that. There's a difference, and there shouldn't be, right? There is a, a something different. Maybe. Maybe. Ooh. Maybe. I'm at very least curious. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's something going on. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll try the same on the, the Bad Monkey as yeah. a similar pedal. Yeah, let's do that. So, th- so um, as far as we know, the um, the Digitech Bad Monkey mm. is um, obviously not... <clears throat> they can't really say it's a Tube Screamer, but it's very, very close. It's a green pedal. It's a green pedal, right. Um, and... It it performs pretty much the same function as um, as uh, as the original Tube Screamer, right? Or the, maybe the second version. Um, I'll say something, and this may be sacrilegious, but I actually push in the Laney. I prefer the Bad Monkey over that Tube Screamer. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why. It just just does something slightly different to the sound. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay, so the Duracell. Okay, I've um I've wound the game right up on this as well because okay. it seems to have the most effect on the last bit. It doesn't have as much gain as the other ones for no, the time, so that may be part of it. And the Phillips. Definitely engaged. No. Nope. No. Nope. There we go. Somehow I prefer that. I don't know if that's just my imagination that that did something different. I want this to be true because it's going to save a fortune in batteries. Well, even if it isn't, it could save you a fortune in batteries because then you'd know that buying the cheap batteries isn't going to make a difference. Hmm? Well, I mean, like, if this test proves that the cheap batteries are better, you'll buy hmm. cheap batteries. If it proves there's no different, you'll buy cheap batteries. Oh, well, okay, right. Yeah. If there's no difference, <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 true. Oh, I see, but yeah. if a Duracell it, sounds better. If Right, if if Eric Johnson is to be believed, yeah, then the but he's saying the better battery is the better tone, right? Oh no, I don't know about that. Well, I, I don't know. I can't yeah. remember what he said, but the people generally on the forums are saying that. Just the give, him a, give him a bell. Call him up. Let's let's just check. What time okay, is it EJ. in LA? <laughs> is that where he lives? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, here we go. Sounds grittier, fuzzier somehow. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Okay. Okay, let's can we jump straight from that one to the the Duracell? Yeah, I want to do that too. And I want to just do the same um what you're hearing it most on, is it the like the bends? Yeah. All so if you just do that yeah. where you hear that pick attack okay. against the string. Go, do it again. So scientific. Again. Engage. The 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 green cell, the carbon zinc battery seems to have less highs yep. for me. There's there's a difference. There is a difference. That's the point. And that's what we wanted to know. So how foolish of us to argue with Eric Johnson. Well, not really, but he he's absolutely right. Yeah, of course there's a difference. Can we do the same with the Juris on the Phillips? Let's try it. Duracell. Come on. 
I'm going to mess up these contacts. That'll be the next thing. <laughs> Out comes the soldering iron. Okay. Mm. Mm, not as much. Not as much anything. difference. Yeah. Let's have a think about this. As you said, I believe, uh, maybe before we started rolling, quite possibly the the fuzz is going to be most mm. pronounced. Yeah. Yeah. Should Should we try, try that? that? Yeah, let's do that. But I definitely heard something there. I, I, I think, uh, especially on that Bad Monkey, you could hear a big difference between the cheapest battery and the most expensive battery. Yeah, for sure. I hope it's going to come across in a recording. Because it might be a feel thing. It might be an in-the-room thing. Are we actually recording this time? Or are we just talking to ourselves? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so this is the um, Dodd Classic Fuzz, which is kind of a knockoff of a Big Muff, as far as I'm aware. Dialed in, roundabout. Just mids. Yeah. For now, just see okay. how we go. We might and this change is on that. the Duracell, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a bit more like it. Well, okay. whatever you think of fuzz pedals, that's what they sound like. Yeah. Well, that's what this one sounds yeah. like. Yeah. Seems to have more low end. Mm, is that my imagination? Yeah, I know. It lost something there. This one comes straight on. It's good. Okay. Yeah. Big, yeah. big noticeable difference. Yeah, really muddy that last one. Uh, I'm not sure if I prefer it. it. It's a choice then, isn't it, really? Now, hold on. Yep. Dial in some more top end, but keep this battery. Let's see what happens there. Okay. Yeah. something going on yeah it's having an effect on the time Let, let's do the ab duracell yep. to green cell test and we'll take it from there okay do, do a big chord and then the bends Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. It, it. 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 There is. There's something there. Yeah. Okay. We'll do it again. We're going to boost the fuzz and bring down the level up a little bit, and we'll see if that makes a difference. Yeah. Set to stun. Oh my god. It's a boost. That's scary. All right. <laughs> fun but yeah in an ugly way it is ugly <laughs> oh god it's 
Hamid Hendrixy now. Hmm. Yeah, there's something in that. Definitely, it's having an effect because you haven't, you didn't change anything, right? You no. didn't change, touch the dials between the. the That's yeah. sounding like the ultra metal now. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, we got to get that thing opened up because um, in terms of filth, this is the absolute worst. Was that how you do it? Yeah, it's how like would anybody monkey. know that? <laughs> e. It's probably never going back, but there we go. <laughs> it's done. Uh, okay. This is what it is. Whoa, that is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. That's a good start. <laughs> yeah, okay. What's it sound like? Is it engaged? I guess, is it? Change my mind. This is my new favourite pedal in the whole world. <laughs> no. it's, it's ridiculous. Okay, we're going to move yeah. to another battery. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Did you check out the circuit vendors guy? You, you go, yeah, oh did. my god! Right? Yeah. It would do amazing. Something. Right. <laughs> That's like it's had a mid-range scoop. It's weird. Okay, I've got a theory on this, um, yeah. but let's do the next battery before I uh, talk my nonsense. <laughs> yes. I want to hear that again. I just That is worth the price of admission. Let's hear it. Can do it. Oh. That's annoying. Never mind. All right, engaged. No. Right, so... Last week when we tried this out, we noticed that, um, was it a week before? Either way, we noticed that playing up on the 12th fret and playing quite fast yeah. um, was where you got the most interesting results for. So let's do the battery test again with it. All right, uh, I'm game. We'll do a quick swap over between them. And turn it on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> It's certainly a sound. Okay, wow. good. So it makes a difference. Make it stop. Oh. <laughs> so. All right. So, so my, my, my theory, yeah. honestly, is that the EQ circuit mm -hmm. might be so ropey. On, on the yeah, ultra metal. Yeah. That even like every time you plug it in and out, it might move a little bit not not the physic not physically yeah. but whatever potentiometer is underneath or you know the however it tracks yeah. or whatever i'm sure that the uh the circuit is um quite special 
But it's again, like I'm not having a dig because uh, that is actually quite cool. I wouldn't mind sitting down and playing with that. Yeah, I've been looking know. to get another one of these just to see if this one's broken. But they're like thirty five quid. And no I'm just way. not willing to spend no that. No way. That's second hand on eBay. No. <laughs> wow. I know. Mm, no. Thirty five pence I'd pay, but thirty five quid. I know. Hmm. I keep my eye open. <laughs> okay, anyway, so do you remember that guy? What's his name? played for a band called Van Halen. Or oh, Eddie Van Halen. Oh, yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so he used to have this power attenuator on his yeah. in his amp. Have yeah, you heard about yeah, this? Where he yeah. winds down the voltage yeah, yeah. for his amp yeah. and he gets a, you know, a different sound out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got a variable power supply, mm-hmm. which we can use to power the pedals. Mm-hmm. Do you want to see if that makes any difference? Let's do it, yeah. All right. Yeah. Is, it, is this going to blow up any of the pedals? Yeah, maybe. Maybe okay. not the Ibanez, eh? All right. <laughs> Should we start with the fuzz? Yeah, yeah. No, we can't not? start with the fuzz because it's got a weird... Oh, my God. Can't we start with the Behringer? Yes, we can start yeah. with the Behringer. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Whose pedal is this? This is Atlas. Oh, okay. <laughs> this was Chris, so right. thank you, Chris, for Thanks, just Chris. so you, much You might not get this back now, or if you do, it will be sort of glowing, radioactive. Sweet. There we go. Okay, so this is running at standard 9 volts from its power supply. Cripes. Okay. Get the idea. Wow, the power still carried on. So what are you going to switch it to? 7.5. Okay, 7.5 volts. If it was, if that's still enough to uh, give it juice. <laughs> Weird. If anything, that's a bit more tame. I would expect it to. I would expect the sort of signal to start to break up if you didn't give it enough voltage. Five. Five volts now. This is probably a really bad idea. There's probably it's some electricians watching out there going, "No, stop!" <laughs> now you're talking. It sounds sad. It sounds like you're not giving it enough energy. It's like, oh, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I can always hear it. Yeah, maybe. Hold on, let's try some chords. Odd. Oh my god. Some mad scientist stuff right now. What now? It's lowest setting of 3 volts. Okay. Nice. <sighs> Go on then, you're going to turn it on. I don't want to. It's barely got enough power to light the LED. Try that. Christ. Um.
Okay, well, um, this takes it into some interesting territory because I would imagine things like um, envelope filters and um, mm. the, the the ones that do like the vocal processing or so that sort yep, of stuff, yep. so you get the vowel sounds and all that kind of stuff. They must be working on a similar kind of thing, right? It must be about voltage, <laughs> I would assume, because you're starting to get that kind of sound now, aren't you? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what no. it is. Let's. I'm going to risk you a bad monkey. All right. Okay. Yeah, you know, I like the bad monkey better than the Ibanez, and then I just carry on. It's okay. <laughs> So we're going to start with the proper voltage, I assume. Yes. All right. Seven point five volts. Sounds cool. No discernible difference really, it's about the same. Five volts. Is it on? reduction in gain really yeah kind of hmm three volts this is like a bit crusher now yeah, yeah. now it's starting to get and fall apart yeah okay right, let's just put it back to 9 volts check that it's not completely destroyed forever <laughs> oh my bad monkey that's good son of a monkey look at him <laughs> such a fool So then, um, so Eddie Van Halen, it yeah. was very much a case of um, trying to drive the gain circuit on the amp as much as he could. So he reduced okay. the voltage so that he could actually push it harder, right? And get the distortion from okay. the head, right? Um, and quite a few players do that, I think. You know, for, mm -hmm. I don't think Eddie invented it necessarily, but he popularized it certainly. Yeah. Um, but this is slightly different, isn't it? Because it's yeah we're talking about reducing voltage as an idea of 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 as a tonal choice. Yep. Right. Now I think they're two different things. To be honest, I think mm -hmm. although you might get a reduction in voltage between the batteries, mm. I think the main difference is the way the power is supplied. Yeah. I think that um, with the Duracell, you get full power as soon as you make any attack on any nodes. Right. Whereas with the other one, it's like, oh, I need to supply power. I mean, it's just right. a little bit okay. of a delay. Mm -hmm. I think that's it, personally. It did make a big tonal difference. I didn't, not once did I get this, the, the kind of, that nice sag kind of sense. That wasn't really there. Possibly on the fuzz, but that wasn't, that wouldn't be what you'd mm. use a fuzz yeah. for anyway. Would, you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. If you, it, yeah, possibly if you were like trying to dial in on a very specific Hendrix tone or something like that, yeah, it would be interesting to have a fuzz with some kind of voltage attenuator. I wonder if such pedals exist. Yes, I do. I think these are the kind of the pedals you're getting coming out at the moment from the like the boutique manufacturers. Okay, they're um. 
I think some even have like a pedal that controls the voltage on them, right, so you can really so break it down. The right, bit crushers and that right, kind of thing, okay. where it really breaks up at low voltage. So is that essentially what a what a bit crusher is? Is it? Is, I don't know. Yeah. I can't really speak to that. Yeah, yeah. it sounds like it. But yeah, I definitely think that's what the circuit bender guys are doing. Isn't yeah. it? It's just reducing the voltage till it just falls apart, basically. Yeah, I think so. Part. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so cool. conclusions. Any conclusions there? Yeah, I mean. For me, the battery does make a difference, mm -hmm. and uh, the lower quality one does have something to it that makes it sound a bit more kind of vintagey, maybe. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know that mm -hmm. that might be where we're going with it. I mean, as you know, I'm not really a pedal guy, yeah. But this is an, another sort of avenue to to look down because yeah. definitely it's having a big big effect. Um, yeah, huge effect on the sound, and just as a as an idea so that Philips was 299 the Duracell is probably 399 something yeah. like that how much was that green cell one hang on because that was in like a pack of 12 for like a fiver or something yeah right? I bought it off Amazon right. um, I bought two packs of 12 for I, I don't know I'll get a price and I'll put it up on the screen yeah, mm. Bong. yeah. right but way but, but cheaper. Yeah, way cheaper, yeah. Way cheaper. Way cheaper. But then yeah. I suppose if anything you buy in bulk off the internet, it's going to be cheaper than going down to your local shop and buying a Duracell, you know. True, so. true. So, so maybe, it, can yeah. I have the power? Can we just put like an example of multi-packs of uh, batteries? Okay, yeah. from a large retailer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. It's only because Dave gave me the power. I, I haven't actually got that yeah, power. That's yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah. I'm sitting in your seat, so I maybe you power. do have the yeah. power. Are you going to edit it all this week? Is nope. That, nope. <laughs> nope. Not got that power. <laughs> right all right all right what else is happening okay so cool so that's that test done so mm. um what we didn't talk about today is anything new anything exciting happening in the world of ian and guitars uh mm, let me have a think um you had a rehearsal last night how was that oh yeah yeah yeah. band rehearsal but i was playing drums for that one so oh, i sweet. can't really can't speak talk to about it. that no. Not, not no no this is it's not the drum geek arama podcast is it um no yeah no it's good actually and uh um yeah okay well that was an interesting one so the guitar player in that band he's got a the orange the all valve posh orange combo uh -huh. right last night he was playing through a vox valve tronic okay and i preferred the sound of that like way more i mean this is not the first time we're going to say how we don't right. like orange amps on the They're, podcast is it they are um it's chalk and cheese with them, isn't it? Like some people yeah. love them, some people just like, nope. I think it's what you want to play through them. Yeah. If you want some really nice bluesy tones, it's not mm. going to happen. If you want kind of, you know, to drive them hard and mm -hmm. like put some pedals in front and get mm -hmm. a death metal tone, fine. If you want to get like a punk tone from them, fine. But but it wasn't just me. No. Like like the the whole band were yep. just like, that amp sounds great, doesn't it? And it's uh, and you know the the guitar player, uh, another Ian actually, bless him. Uh, he 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 was he wasn't he was just like yeah I know and he was just like yeah. oh, whatever like he he wasn't like defending the more expensive amp he was just yeah. like oh, it's so annoying. Is the, the Valvetronics his? Yeah, yeah, it's his. So as well. that's a solid yeah. state power with um, a valve and the preamp. Is that right? With Something those? like yeah. that, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. And it's an old one as well. To be honest, I've never been a fan of those boxes either. No. So <laughs> it says a lot, really. Yeah. Yeah. But it sounded good. You know, it was breaking up in the right places and nice. it was a nice, nice smooth distortion. Awesome. Um, there's not, you know, there's not, I'm sure you can dial in a good sound on mm -hmm. an orange, but that particular one that he has, um, it doesn't take pedals very well in the front. Okay. And it, and it's very difficult to dial, you know, or maybe you can dial in one really good sound. That's it. Okay. But flipping between clean and dirty even doesn't really work. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So anyway, that was that's the 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 only new bit of okay. uh, guitar information in my world. How about in your world? Well, not really, nothing new. Um, but what I did discover from editing the video from last week is that um, I want one of those Ibanez three three five shape, not of the AM fifty threes, whatever they're called. Uh -huh. so it's looking it up, yeah, because it sounded great. Of course you do. There's something in them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and definitely when you start playing them it makes a big difference yeah and so. borrow my one for a little while have a play around and and see if it's yeah. something you really want or something you just think you want and then yeah, wow. there is a difference yeah um I, i'm not using it the next couple of weeks so okay. um yeah have a borrow have cool, a play thanks. and yep. um see what you think but yeah i'm a bit of a convert now and and i t i'm tending to look at, at more yeah. Semi acoustic guitars now. I think it'd really be, I'd want to play it live, and I've not got any yeah. gigs coming up, so maybe 
I'll put it all on hold until sure. I've played your one live. Yeah, and then we'll, yeah we'll that's take it from probably there. a good idea. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Cool. Right, okay. So one other thing I thought we could talk about today is plectrums. Picks. Okay. Do you have a, a preference? What's what's your preferred pick? Um, I would go for either the the, um, the Dunlop Tortex uh, blue one or the green one, but really just the thickest ones. That's it, like the ones that are sort of one milli or These something. These ones? Yeah, that's, that's... Even though that's a worn-out version of it. Yeah, that's that's basically the my default. Yeah, that, that used to be my default as well. A few, yeah. few reasons for this. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, well, generally speaking, um, I want as little flex as possible. Th- yeah. This is how I was taught. Steve mm-hmm. Steve Loveday taught yeah. me. He's yeah. a very good guitar player. He's still about and doing stuff. Um, so I don't know if you can pick that up. Maybe. Hey, here we go. We got this one. Right? Yep. That that when you're holding a pick, you almost want to treat it like a pencil. As in, um, you only want a little bit sticking out because okay. if you're holding a pencil right at the end, you've got no control. Right? Yeah. But yep. If you're holding it right down at the bottom, uh-huh. it's like holding the end of the pencil. And also that way as well. When you're playing, it's the same as when you're writing. You don't write, stop, readjust your grip, and then carry uh-huh. on. You adjust as you're playing, yep. you know, or as you're writing. And that's that's kind of how I was taught. Just very small okay. amount there. And then from that point of view, there is no flex. So I don't want uh, you know a fifty mil or anything like that. I just want a nice thick one. Okay. Second reason for this: uh-huh. green is quite easy to see. So Good. when you inevitably drop them on the floor, yep. <laughs> you yeah, find them. find them again. Okay, I like it. That is yeah. a good reason. So green, probably. What about the texture on it? What's your? I don't care. You don't I, care. I, You're I, not fussed. I, you know, I mean, it was kind of gross. We were talking about sweaty fingers. I don't get sweaty fingers. So okay. I think the big thing about texture is if you sweat from your fingers, uh-huh. then they slip. Yeah. But I, I've never really had had that problem. Drumsticks, okay. different story. Yesterday, I was dropping my sticks all over the place. It's ridiculous. Uh. But anyway, I'm yeah. not okay. allowed to talk about drumsticks. So what about shape? Hang on, I'm going to put these on the other camera. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, honestly, honestly, I'm not bothered. And this is probably terrible to admit, but uh-huh. at a push, put them on the camera. at a push, I'll play with a two-pence coin if I haven't got anything really you know at an absolute push okay um two p's a bit thick maybe one, one p i don't know but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the, the point is yeah like this kind of thing the slightly uh-huh. smaller ones is what is this that's one? a jazz free shape one okay uh, so this one's no good to me because i just drop it on the floor and never find it again yeah. i probably owned lots this of one's these. a jazz free right 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 okay so the, yeah these little teardrop ones i like these as well they're, they're fine not really fine point on them which matt does make a difference i think um and a nice texture to them so they're easy to hold on to yeah i'm perfectly happy with those as well i'm not i'm not the best guy to ask because i'm not fussy do you know what i mean but there's yeah sure that one's fine this one this one somehow is starting to get a little bit yeah i think too that's... thick is is it is it thicker than that one or am I, it's just my imagination um it's the red making it feel thicker <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But I've lost my micrometer otherwise right, I'd measure it. But. Okay, okay. Well anyway, that that's fine too. Yep. I'll go for that. Okay. Give so. me something I won't like then and I'll explain why I wouldn't like it. I don't dislike that. I'm guessing this glows in the dark, isn't it? It does. That's awesome. So that's good. It that's a bit it's kind of weird because I always think about this. When you're playing a guitar, you're dealing in millimeters, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, guitar wise, that's like holding a brick in your hand. It's weird. It's like holding a brick between your fingers. And yeah. I, I would feel slightly disconnected from the strings if yeah. I was using something that thick. Yeah. Uh, so, Agreed. So, but I would still, like, you know, if I had nothing and somebody handed me that, I'd say, thank you, and then use it, you know. That one was very expensive. Was it? Yeah. Go on. I went how, through. How expensive? He will appear on the screen here. Bing. <laughs> Can't remember. Um, this was um, I bought this from a guy. Oh, I can't remember his name. I should have remembered this before starting the podcast. Bob. He makes guitars huh. um, out of somewhere in Europe. It's okay. very very famous for it. Anyway, Sven. Sven. Sven no. Yeah. I'll, I'll all this information will appear on the screen, and I will we'll stop looking like an idiot. 
I went through a phase of trying to figure out what my favourite plectrum would be and did loads of research, uh-huh. spent too much money on plectrums <laughs> for it. Um, before we get onto that, though, yeah. what do you think of these guys? Okay. The shark fin. I've, ne- I've never really under... What's what's the vibe on these? Why? why? I don't know. Okay. I think they- that, that serrated edge is supposed to give you a different strumming texture, maybe. Ah, okay. Well, it's, it's, it's cool. It looks cool. Yeah, it looks good. Um, I wouldn't know which end to use. No, that's the problem I have with it. Start, is it that? Is it? That? I guess it's any of them, isn't it? Well, yeah, um, I think that's the idea. Yeah, I'm going to try these then. Can I borrow this one? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm going gonna, gonna to borrow that and then I'm going to give that a try. It'll probably just really annoy me. I'll throw it away and then get another one. Yeah, probably. <laughs> what about this guy? Okay. Like the super sharp Ooh. guy. Ooh. Did you do this yourself? You sharpened no, this no, up? No, no. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Because do you know about the carpet trick? Yeah. Right? Yeah, so yeah. this really works. I saw it on a, I think on a YouTube video. So anyway, I'm going to just rip off somebody else's thing. Any old carpet, whatever, perhaps not your mum's best carpet, whatever, but you just run the edges of the pick. One, two, turn it over. One, two, and that is the best way to sharpen it up. Yeah. And it works. And you're like, that won't work. It's carpet. I don't know. It's something to do with the material and the way it interacts. It kind of burns it a little bit, doesn't yep. it? Yeah. <clears throat> um. And, Anyway, sorry, <clears throat> excuse me. Coming back to the pick shape, yeah, that's a bit odd. I would be worried about it stabbing me in the leg when I put it in my pocket, but I would still use it. Yeah, fair enough. Seeing what else I've got here. Hold on, is it still in the screen? I can't see what's what's happening there. Yeah, oh, we've got yeah, it. Okay, good. So that was the one I was just playing with, All right? I feel like it should be on a different colour background. Uh huh. Now, I've got a friend of mine um, who always goes for these Altex. Dunlop. Uh, that, that, hard wearing. Right, that is a cool logo for sure. Apparently apparently they're easier to hold on to. Okay. I'm not sure about that. Are they more expensive? A little bit. Yeah. But they they wear less. So that's that is a thing with picks, they do kind of oh, blunt yeah, over time. Sure. Okay. Well I, I lose them before they get blunt, but yeah, I get the idea. Here's one that's been modified. Oh. Okay. See, that's that's a little bit thicker, and you, you've you've scored it so that it yeah, because these fingers. are super shiny. Yeah. So very easy to drop. Uh huh. So I've just taken some score marks from a knife and just given it a bit of grip. It's a it? really good way to cut your fingers. Yep. Oh, is this, is this, is this still plastic? It looks like ceramic or something. It's a different type of plastic. I'll find out what it's called. It's uh-huh. um, proprietary to, I think, the guy that makes it. This is so made this by has, Tom Winspear. Right. Winspear Picks, yeah. So this has like a sort of a, a, a beveled edge or something, a yep. smoothed out edge, yep. right? Interesting. Okay. See, but I... <laughs> I occasionally do make a habit of picking up a guitar pick that I'm not happy with. Yeah. Just because it's a good idea to to try different things. Do you know what I mean? Don't don't get stuck in your way. Um, like recently, I've been trying to do a lot more flat picking and finger picking. So you know, doing mm-hmm. the bass strings yeah. with the pick and and doing this. That's yeah. cool. The hybrid picking. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could right. Do that. Right. It, I'm not get. I'm not very good at it yet, but I've been working on it. Um. The uh, yeah, that's that's fine. I mean, I don't know. You see, again, because I don't, they don't, they, they ping out of my hand when I hit the strings wrong. Yeah, they don't ping out of my hand because my fingers are sweaty. So all of this like uh-huh. grippy stuff, I've used them before, and it just doesn't make any difference really. So again, it just puts more distance between me and the feedback of the string. Now, th- see, this will come back into the mm. um, semi-acoustic thing. Because I am almost certain that I'm getting more haptic feedback through the pick with those semi-acoustic guitars, really? which may then make me think more about picks. Okay. Bizarre, huh? So, what are the little orange ones? Um, they're like really tiny, for like fifty milli. That maybe that one. No, is that is that really skinny? Yeah, that's there, yeah, right? So I will occasionally use one of these for acoustic guitar. 
Yeah, same. But, that's what I use. Yeah, pause, give it kind that, of a nice, yeah, kind that of initial, mellow drum. That's it. The in, initial attack on a really mm. thick pick doesn't sound great yep. on acoustic. So, yeah. But then, but then again, you're not doing speed picking things on an acoustic normally, unless you're John McLaughlin. I wonder what picks he uses. So this is a a point four six, and that's kind of the sort of thickness I yeah. play for strum, like on acoustic, very thin. Yeah. But really again, you see, if you have got that grip and you are really, I yeah, you can get away with that anyway. It doesn't really make that much well, difference. It, yeah, I think it depends on your your picking style as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Um, some people who pick like with a full arm mm-hmm. pick, they can get Pete away Townsend. with something like that. Yeah, <laughs> more of a full arm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and my names are failing me today very clearly because this guy should be easy to remember. But the guitarist from Mr. Big, come on now, Paul Gilbert. Paul Gilbert. Mm-hmm. Why did I? How could I forget that? Um, he he was talking recently on a podcast about mm. his picking style and he says that he likes to strum all the strings and mute okay. all of them apart from the one he's playing right and for that reason he uses very thin picks yeah. which was a surprise i don't think that was the case when he was playing in mr big but that's the case with his more recent stuff you know, coming back to um eddie van halen uh-huh. um all roads lead back to eddie uh, apparently he has a very very soft picking style his right hand even with the speed picking and stuff like he, mm. he really doesn't dig in like according to him and yeah. people who have been close to him seeing him playing i don't know what picks he uses but it's kind of, it sounds counterintuitive mm-hmm. but you know it, it, yeah that's it it you you can get a lot of uh, a lot of power just out of the amp you know you yeah. don't have to dig into the string or attack it uh-huh yeah cool mm-hmm. right so i went on a Big pick a discovery pick, a phase. A pick pilgrimage. P- pil- yeah, yep, one of those. And um, listened to lots of reviews on different plectrums mm-hmm. and things like that because I was using the green ones, but I do drop them occasionally. It's probably my technique mm-hmm. more than anything else. But these are my standard ones. Good to mm-hmm. see on stage. The mm-hmm. texture on them I find quite good because it's almost got like a powdery feel to them. Mm. What's grubby. the difference between them and the blue ones? The blue ones? Thickness, I think. Is it? Because I'll, 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 I'll just go between the blue or the or the green and then the purple is even thicker than that isn't it yeah so the green is 0.88 mil and the blue is one mil okay i've been favoring the blues recently i think and the purples is 1.14 there you go right see it could almost be like uh judo or jujitsu like maybe you have to start with a yellow pick and then just gradually <laughs> work, way up to work black. your way up to I don't know. <laughs> well, interesting you say that. So I, I tried lots of picks. Yeah. I tried this big glow dark guy. I tried this big mm-hmm. one by um, uh, Tom Winspear. Then mm-hmm. I I heard somebody saying that the Jazz Freeze are really good, but they're mm-hmm. a bit too small for me. Just a little mm-hmm. bit too small. So um, I then moved on to what I've stuck with on guitar picks, which is... Um, it's the John Petrucci jazz style pick. Mm. So although it's black, <laughs> so it's not hard to, it's not easy to see on stage when you drop it. It's got a couple of good things going for it. It's got a good mixture, like it's got a shiny plastic tip on it so that it slips over the strings quite well. It doesn't kind of grip the strings and, and tear on them. It moves quickly across the strings. Mm-hmm. But it's got that grippy bit on the top and it's the right size for me and it's pointy enough for me. It just seems to be a good all round for me um so i think this is a jazz two size i think Mm -hmm. um and then just recently um tom did some halloween special plectrums which i just thought were really cool so i bought a couple um they're kind of like this blood coated look Mm, that's really cool i like it yeah this is cool and these these are very similar to the John Petrucci size are a little bit um a little bit thicker, a little bit pointier. They've got a the beveled edge which is nice. Um the logo is quite grippy on it. Uh-huh. Um and these are more hard wearing. Right. In terms of price as well, it's quite interesting because obviously um the handmade picks are a bit more expensive. Sure. So um if I was to put these in price order, as far as I remember You can just insert the uh, prices underneath, can't you? Yeah, Yeah, I could do. Mm. 
going from your your standard right, Dunlop right. old decks, then the uh, John Petrucci one, mm. and then the Windspear ones up to this one, which I right. remember the name of it soon. Um, and it's down to materials, um, so I've kind of gone for a mid range one as my standard. It's fine. It's good. So, what a uh, 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 standard Tortex is like fifty pence or something? Is it maybe a bit more now? I can't remember the last I'm going, time I'm I going them. back to yeah. like nineties prices probably. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. I, th- I think they probably are about fifty, sixty pence, something like that. I'll find out the average price. Also, I I kind of get um, Dunlop picks at trade price. So. Right. Okay. Well, I mean, all I'm thinking is if I could find mm-hmm. all the picks I've lost, would I be a millionaire? That's a good question. I mean, that's the ultimate question for right. today. I think. Right. I mean, you'd be close on it. You certainly could buy a camper van or something. Right, right. I'd I'd be quids in, wouldn't I? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, this is the ultimate question, uh-huh. and we'll leave this one hanging. Is where do lost picks go? Who knows? Same it, place as lighters and socks, I'd imagine. And pens. And pens. Big pens. Yeah. And, and anywhere I put down a screwdriver. It's not the same place as car keys because they come back. Sometimes, so, well, hopefully. Yeah, this is it. For the most most part, of the time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Bizarre that's it. answers on a postcard, please. Yeah, is that a it. good place to finish? You think? Um, yeah, this is nonsense. Cause anywhere else, so let's yeah. do that. Okay, yeah. fine. So <laughs> um, let us know where you think uh, plectrums go. Plectrum, plectrums go when you lose them. Plectrums. Yeah. yeah. Plectrum. I never say plectrum. No. I like saying plick because I, I yeah because it's completely wrong, isn't it? Give me a plick. Ah, uh, you see, there's something about, I'm I'm teaching people as I said at work at the moment. And somebody's taken to call them a plucker. Yeah, that's even better. Give and me the plucker. Just, I'm going to uh, use that one now. Try not to get Where's the pluck? Where's the plucker for it? Yeah. yeah I want that. Okay, fine. Awesome. Anyway, let us know where your plicker pluckers go when you lose them. <laughs> um, like, comment, subscribe, all that lovely stuff. Hit the bell. Um, send us an email, Katagi Karama. Let us know what you want to test. We've got um, a request from Glenn Downer um, to do some pickup testing. So that's probably what we'll look at next week. We'll do some pickup comparisons. And yeah. Thanks nice very one. much. Keep playing.